The ancient city of Ephesus is about a 30-minute drive from Kusadasi, a port city on the Aegean Sea in Turkey. This is where I disembarked from a Regent Seven Seas cruise ship on an October morning and joined a motor coach excursion. Our first stop on the excursion was to the House of the Virgin Mary. According to its history, John brought the Virgin Mary to Ephesus about four to six years after Jesus' death. When we arrived, the place was packed with tour buses and everyone was bunched up waiting to visit the tiny house. It took about 30 minutes to wait in line and about 15 seconds to walk through. You basically walk through it in a single file line and are only able to spend a few seconds within it. No pictures are allowed. The inside is simple with a small altar. After you walk through the house, you follow a path down to a lower level where there are a row of souvenir and refreshment kiosks. We were only on the site about 60 minutes before we boarded the bus and headed towards Ephesus. The drive there is somewhat scenic as you traverse through some hills and valleys. I was looking forward to Ephesus. It was built in the 10th century BC, so it is an extremely ancient site. It is a huge set of ruins that covers a vast area, and it is still being excavated. We were told that what you see is only 10% of what needs to be uncovered. When you first enter Ephesus, you see a large and long plaza that is rimmed by excavated buildings. I was immediately struck by the size of the ruins, and this was just the beginning. As you walk along the path, you see rows and rows of the remains of marvelous buildings. It definitely made sense, when I saw the vastness of the site, why there is still so much to excavate. It's just an enormous city that has survived all these centuries. The main walkway is mostly marble that was imported. Ephesus used to be a port city, but it's now inland by about seven kilometers from the Aegean Sea. I've seen quite a few ruins in my travels, but Ephesus struck me as one of the most beautiful and perhaps opulent. There were some amazing carvings, statues, and columns that brought the reality of the human workmanship to the front. This is the Temple of Adrian. It's hard to imagine building something this intricate and ornate today. Look at the details on this archway. I have to say, one of the most fascinating sites our guide led us to was this public bathhouse. Evidently, using a toilet was a communal thing, and we were told the slaves had to sit on the marble toilet seats to warm them up before their masters sat on them. Continuing our walk down the main path, we finally spotted the Piece de Resistance, the Library of Celsus, which was built circa 125 AD. Celsus was a governor who built the library with his own wealth and was buried in a sarcophagus beneath it. The facade was reconstructed in the 1970s using fragments found on the site or copies of fragments that had been moved to museums. It is certainly a magnificent building with its two stories of columns. It's not that large on the inside, but was said to have held over 12,000 scrolls. Evidently, it was built facing east so that the reading rooms receive the best morning light. Moving on from the library, you follow along a grand promenade lined with columns and see more structures from the ancient city. Then you reach a large amphitheater with an estimated seating of 25,000. The theater is believed to be the largest in the ancient world. It was initially used for drama, but during later Roman times, gladiator combats were also held there. In 2007, they discovered evidence of a gladiator graveyard. Our pathway out of Ephesus led us to some tourist shops and then back onto the bus. We then traveled about 10 minutes to the Ephesus Museum, where many of the artifacts recovered from the ruins are displayed. There were hundreds of sculptures, bas relief, jewelry, architectural pieces, and carvings. It was quite astounding and another reminder of just how enormous the ancient city of Ephesus is. With so much more to be excavated, it must be exciting for the archaeologists to continue discovering more artifacts. 
When you leave the museum, there is a modern plaza with shops and refreshments. I enjoyed some fresh pomegranate juice while waiting to board the bus. Our last stop on this excursion was at a resort hotel on the shore. It was a pretty fancy hotel, and we were led to a banquet hall and served a buffet lunch. It was nice, but not particularly a cultural event. Back in Kusadasi, you discover a tourist shopping area near the docks with lots of restaurants, souvenir shops, and abundance of carpet stores. It is a pretty port side that just begs for a stroll along the shore. That completed my day in Ephesus. It was definitely one of the highlights of the port stops on this cruise. If you'd like to see videos of other ports of call on the Regent Seven Seas Venice to Athens cruise, see the description below for the video links. And if you'd like to follow more of my senior and solo travel journeys, please click subscribe below. Cheers!